Okay, uh, let's <coughs> come back to the class. Uh, let's resume uh, with our process discussion. Mm. And currently we are discussing the scheduling issue. Uh, basically, we have the scheduler software. Uh, it's a different process. Uh, it's a kernel process, operating system runs it. Uh, it belongs to the operating system. So it basically interleaves processes in order to give every process the illusion of having its own CPU, okay? Uh, so with this idea, we are able to multitask actually. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, basically the scheduler's task is to select among available processes the next one to execute. Uh, but there are a variety of queues in a given system. Uh, uh, the ready queue is the uh, most popular and the most useful queue. And uh, by that, I mean, in some systems, we don't even have job queues. Uh, uh, so this is a rather old queue. So basically, all the processes, they don't fit uh, into the memory. And then you just uh, represent them in a different queue called the job queue. And from the job queue, they migrate into the ready queue. And from the ready queue, they will go to the CPU. But uh, these days, the typical way is just to use this ready queue because everything is uh, in the memory. So from memory, they can go to the CPU. There is also the device queue uh, where it uh, ac accommodates the processes which are in need of a device like the uh, input IO device, like the keyboard hit, for instance, if that process is executing a uh, scanf, uh, then it is basically inside that device queue. And once it gets the input from the keyboard or another device, uh, then it comes back to the ready queue again. So everything goes to the ready queue at some point. Okay, ready queue is very important. Uh, so here, for instance, once you are in the ready queue, you can go to the CPU to get executed. Uh, and during your CPU cycles, uh, for your time may expire, in which case you just come back to the ready queue again, to the back of that queue. Uh, or during your execution, even though you have enough, more time to go, you have reached an I.O. request, for instance. In that case, you go to your device queue or your I.O. queue. And once the I.O. comes, you go back to the ready queue, okay? Not to the CPU directly. Or in other cases, uh, you are a pr process executing and you forked, you created a new, a new child. So in this case, uh, so this is, totally arbitrary uh, in some sometimes your child immediately replaces you in the cpu and it e gets executed and when the child uh, when the child finishes or its time is up then uh, you you are already in the ready queue you wait for your turn to come to the cpu okay or sometimes what happens is you create the child and you put the child in the ready queue and you continue your execution. So this is, uh, uh, there is no standard here. Uh, but the idea is when you fork a child, there's a second, a new process in play. So you have to put that into the ready queue or you have to put yourself to the ready queue and let the child execute. Another action can be you get an interrupt. So for instance, what is an interrupt? Uh, uh, you were waiting on this sleep function, for instance, and the sleep, this function finished. Uh, so the system called this is here. And then the system interrupts you, telling that, okay, uh, your sleeping time is over. 
come back to the ready queue because you are not fully ready to execute back. Uh, okay, so this is that, for instance. Uh, and again, the job scheduler, the long-term scheduler, is the one where you select which processes should be brought into the ready queue. Okay. So this long-term, this is rather a long-term scheduler. It allows uh, you to control the degree of multitasking because uh, all the ready queue elements will be executing at some point. That's why. Uh, and the size of the ready queue is decided by this long-term scheduler. Uh, uh, yes, is there a question? No, I guess, okay. Uh, and then we have this short-term scheduler, also known as the CPU scheduler, uh, which uh, selects which process should be executed next. Uh, sometimes this is the only scheduler in a system, as I mentioned before. <clears throat> so let's talk about some scheduling algorithms. Uh, here is an unfair and non-preemptive algorithm for you. Unfair means, as the name implies, uh, this is not fair to some processes. The preemptive is a new term for you, probably. It is preemption means kicking you out of the CPU, okay? So non-preemptive means no kick out happens. Uh, process is never get kicked out of the CPU. Uh, so everything else has to wait, have to wait for the process to finish. So FIFO or first come first search uh, idea is doing this unfair and non-preemptive scheduling. Uh, the idea is run until you are done. So, but this is, this may lead to bad uh, timing. So for instance, if you have the burst time of 24 seconds, so these, these are not seconds, but let's assume these are seconds for now. Burst time means the following, the continuous amount, the time between two IO. Okay, so in other words, the, uh, con the uh, continuous execution time without any interruption. So P1 is a big process, it needs 24. So if the scheduler, since this came first, I run P1 first, uh, 24 seconds, and then P2 for three seconds, and then another three will handle P3. So in the end, the P1 hasn't waited at all, but P2 and P3 has have waited big time. And the average will be 17 per, per process, which is not good uh, because all I need was three, but I am waiting like 17 seconds here. And for the completion times, then you have to look at this bar here. So I need 24 for P1, which is the best I can do. And for P2, I need another 27 and for P3 I need 30. So if you average them, uh, on average, uh, a process completes in 27 seconds, which is again terrible because P2 is like able to complete in three seconds. And so consider a different order then. Assume P2 has come first. So in this scenario, P6 waits, but uh, only just seconds, three, six seconds, and P2 doesn't wait at all, zero, and P1, it waits three se six seconds, and P3 waits three seconds. As you can see, on average, I have a waiting time of three, and the completion uh, time is on average, again, three plus six plus 30, and they average 13, which is better. Uh, but let me introduce you a fair and preemptive scheduler, which is the uh, basically the fundamental of the uh, schedulers in use in modern operating systems. So we don't just use this directly, but this is the idea of the modern scheduling algorithms. It is fair and it it is preemptive. So preemptive means you have some time amount called quantum. Uh, and when you hit the quantum, 
you get kicked out of the CPU. You are preempted. So this is like milliseconds, uh, around milliseconds. So le let's first comment on this value. Basically, if I keep quantum infinity, like a very big interval, then this uh, algorithm reduces to the first come first third because I am basically doing run until done in that scenario, uh, which is not good because I have seen that first come first third isn't a very good algorithm. And also, if I keep this value very small, then it means that I will be making a lot of context switches, which come with this overhead, uh, the saving stuff to PCB, loading new stuff from PCB. So we have a lot of idle action there. And if I keep quantum low, then I will have a lot of context switch overhead in, in, every, in total. So you have to find a good cut here. Uh, and preferably you have to do this adaptively. So maybe you should be able to change this value during the execution of your system. So in this example, however, let's stick with the fixed value of 20 and assume I need 53 seconds for P1. So I start with P1, but after 20, I kick it out of the CPU. So I have 33 left for P1. So if you look at the orange boxes here, I have one session of 20 seconds and another session of 13 seconds, which in the end completes my 53 seconds of action. But uh, it happens like at time 125 uh, at some point in future. So after second 20, I welcome the next process, which is P2. Uh, I am allowed to run 20 seconds, but P2 is already a small process. It just needs eight. So at time 28, I just leave the CPU because I am now in this terminated state. Okay, so from here, I just came to the terminated state for P2. Uh, and then I welcome the next guy, which is P3. It executes another 20, then comes P4 which executes another 20, and come back to P1, which executes another 20. Don't come back to P2 because it is gone from the ready queue. Come back to P3, which goes for another 20, and so on. Uh, so if you look at the, if you analyze this information, uh, what you see on the waiting time is the following, P1, with this amount, okay, these three boxes, which is the distance from 68 to 20, because I am literally waiting for P2, P3, P4 here for my next execution. But it is not even that. I also wait another session uh, at another round. Again, this is called round robin scheduling. So for P1, I have 7 to 2. Similarly, P2 just waits 20 seconds and then it wastes nothing because it is done already. So if you average these right hand side values, your waiting time is like 66 seconds. And completion time is completed similarly. Uh, for P1, you look at this end of the last orange bar, which is 125, and P2 finishes at 28 which is like eight minutes, eight seconds, uh, sorry, 20 seconds worse than the best I could have done, but still, okay, 28 is acceptable. Uh, and so on, if you average them, on average, I complete every process in like 100 seconds. <clears throat> uh, there is another uh, scheduling idea, which is called shortest club next. This is non-preemptive because I am not kicking anything out. I just sort all the processes with their runtime estimates, and then I run the for shortest job first. Uh, this may be unfair uh, because uh, like some processes may start. What do I mean by this? Uh, uh, maybe I am process number six. I want to execute. And just 
when I am about to come to the CPU, another job has arrived with a smaller shortest job, shortest time. So then it is coming to the CPU. So if you do this infinitely many times, number six will never get executed because always something else is coming in front, in between itself and the CPU. So it is unfair to six. Uh, also, another issue is what is this runtime estimate? So you are talking about the process. You have, you know, it's instructions, okay? But it it is really hard to estimate the runtime. Is it really uh, proportional to the number of instructions? So obviously not, right? Because you may have two lines of instructions, but they, it may take one hour to complete if you are. Uh, within that instructions, you are doing a while loop with uh, a big uh, uh, number of steps, etc. So it is hard to come up with this value. Maybe some machine learning may come help here. Ah, uh, Hojam, Hojam, I have a question. Like, yes, I think we'll never get like a perfect runtime estimate anyway because of the halting problem. Never. Uh, yes. Quite easily. It, this is also an issue. Yeah, we don't know uh, whether a program is infinite loop or not, uh, or whether it will finish or not. So yeah, it is also an issue. So this is just a, a, a empirical algorithm actually. So this is never in use. I'm so just let you know about that. You can also create a shortest remaining time next version of it, uh, which is preemptive now because you don't know the full runtime estimate, but you estimate the remaining time. Again, this is a hard thing to estimate, but uh, if something has a small time to execute, then uh, it uh, comes to the CPU and it preempts the uh, current one. Yeah, so this slide is uh, not a very good uh, scheduling. Uh, proposal but round robin is uh, and also another scheduling algorithm can be with the uh, can be using some priority information for instance administration jobs if it is initiated by the admin then uh, it is favored so it comes to the cpu more frequently Okay, so as I told you, I will talk more on the CPU scheduling with the numbers, with the problems uh, later at a different chapter. But now let's focus on the creation of a process. So this is something new for you, a different type of programming here we are going to see. Uh, not very different, but still uh, a function called fork. It will return twice. Okay, so... That is kind of weird, but still, uh, it is a very powerful function that helps you create another process. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's understand why do we call it fork. So you can uh, think of it this way. So you have a, if you look at my hand, you have a thread of execution going upside. Uh, and at this time, you forked, meaning that you continue as a parent process, but also the child continues. So you fork it, and then they may also fork. So you are like, unlike the spoon that we use during the eating activity, uh, fork is a better way to describe this behavior because you come at a point and then you go uh, to as two different branches. So here is another way to look at this. I am at this process whose ID is five, okay? And it calls a fork. So what fork does is it uh, copies the parent uh, with its own address space. So it gets a different memory, okay? So it alloc it is it obtains a different memory. So you increase your memory usage. Uh, and the content of this memory is the copy of the content of your parents' memory. So by content, I mean obviously the variables and their values. So initially, A is two, B is one. 
after the fork, uh, we have uh, so child have access to the same set of variables a and b, and so does parent, and their initial values are the same two and one, two and one. But since these are different copies, when parent updates a into four, this a in the child will still be two. Okay, so stuff like that. They, it will be clear as we do some uh, uh, examples on this. And Could you have, uh, uh, yes, uh, what it means, it returns twice. Okay, it returns value to the caller, which is the parent. It gets to the uh, process ID of the child, child process. Okay, but. It also returns to the child process. What it means? It, it means that uh, so the operating system gives uh, control, uh, creates a new process, and uh, that process receives the number zero, okay, as the return value from here. Uh, and that way you separate this process from the other. So if you look at this picture, for instance, the process ID of this is five. Once the fork is executed, uh, so this guy uh, gets the ID of seven, uh, and it may use it or not use it. It depends on the parent. Uh, but this guy, it gets the ID of zero. Uh, so uh, I will just quote this up for you because uh, it will be much simpler to trace this uh, so i will just come there uh, in a second actually in this second after i give you the motivation so why why do we fork at all uh, so fork is basically some processes being generated from the parent process okay so for instance you have this shell or terminal in your ubuntu or windows uh, in Windows, we call it command prompt. Uh, so you fork. So shell is a process. It's uh, a set of instructions. And it forks different processes. Uh, and it puts them into the background or something. But after all, it forks uh, different processes you invoke from the command line. Uh, or another example, you are running Google Chrome, uh, which is a process. Uh, and when you open a separate tab, it is basically a different process. Uh, so it inherits some of the common data, like the file, menu bar, etc. But it is a totally different process. So if some tab is trapped, like it uh, crashes or something, the other tabs aren't affected at all. Uh, and Similarly, your word processor, okay, uh, you are typing something, and at some point you wanted to print a document, so you hit Control P, for instance. Then a different process has started with the current uh, text content string from your uh, parent process, and then that process starts to communicate with the printer. But the parent process doesn't really care about the printer; it just continues with the typing and undoing or uh, making things italic or bold, whatever. Uh, similarly, uh, in the Unix systems, we have this init process, uh, which you see here on my screenshot. Uh, it is executed first and then uh, this init process, it creates one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight other processes. Uh, and then this may create other processes as well. So, but the point is, this init has forked into some different ways. Uh, without the forking, uh, you could run only the init process, but then it couldn't go uh, further. So, in other words, you wouldn't be able to run other processes, which uh, sucks. Uh, and also, a, a different example can be uh, about vir virus virus uh, program coding. So, what 
those people do is the following your software your virus software forks new processes okay and these processes are annoying they are drawing weird stuff to the screen they are playing some noises so they are totally independent uh, processes and uh, if the user obeys you uh, like to the parent process then parent process as a reward to the user can kill some of those annoying child processes as a reward okay so um, this comes handy in your virus software as well uh, so uh, let's do uh, more talk more about uh, forking mechanism in unix uh, so fork the system call okay uh, it creates a new process this creates an exact duplicate of the parent process uh, so here for instance i am process 4109 i am running uh, and i call fork so what happens is this child is created 4110 and it goes to the end of the ready queue okay so uh, to the end here we ready queue already had other processes like uh, 4277 4391 and now i have a third process which is the child of 4109 it is waiting to be executed but at a given time only one thing is being executed which is in this example 41 continues its execution uh, but the thing you notice is although this is a different memory space than the original parent the initial content is the same so all the variables have a copy here and uh, they have their own uh, here, uh, ahead of them so here for instance we have two separate address spaces okay uh, but they don't interrelate so one update you do in one space doesn't update in other space unless you do some interprocess communication which we will see later uh, well, so now, let's uh, do some process uh, related Unix commands like uh, get familiar with them uh, to see what is going on. Uh, so PS3, uh, so may maybe I should just run them here uh, and that way you will maybe even pay more attention. So I will open my uh, uh, open my terminal here so i am at a unix based system uh, which is a mac here so it supports uh, a lot of the stuff we are about to do uh, so for instance ps3 uh, is a system call uh, i want to print the processes with the hierarchy so currently what is happening but ps3 uh, yes yeah. Uh, there's a more, uh, there's a noise coming out of someone's microphone. What I want to show here is okay, some accident happened. PS3 isn't installed on my system, so I just go quickly and install it. So I hope that it will just take a second. Uh, so this is some Mac related issue. I have a Unix based system, but some of the software isn't ready. So I am just uh installing it uh meanwhile uh, okay meanwhile don't we don't need a meanwhile uh, can i increase the font of this uh, okay by the way this is installed P ps3 okay so if we clear everything so ps3 here uh My PS3, for instance, it gives the current processes with the hierarchy. I can play with the uh, parameters to put it in a better shape, uh, but let's not worry about that at a lot. So what, what is top doing, for instance, top is showing you the active processes in my CPU, okay? 
so Google Chrome, I have three of them or four, depending on the CPU usage. Uh, so this is how frequently Chrome is visiting my CPU, by the way. Care of the, it is CPU bound. Um, so, and with every process, as you can see on the left hand side here, I have a process ID. So for Chrome, it is like that. So let me just start a different process like Safari maybe. Okay, so I hit Safari. Okay, you see that I have this Safari here. Where is it? It is moving around, but at some point we should see it. I think I am seeing it. Okay, so it is not very doing a lot of tasks here. And maybe that's why it is not uh, coming to the picture. Okay, it's Safari is here, but, but uh, so this is a process and I can put it into a terminated state. To do that, I will be using the kill command. Okay, so let me just move, uh, uh, come back to the terminal. So if I, but so let's get the ID of Safari, which is what, uh, which is, <clears throat> uh, if I can see it, 22. Mm. So Safari is annoying. Uh, so if I, if I can just maybe, if I become active in this tab, it uh, gets more uh, CPU time in case. It is going to have 22846. Uh, so 22846. So if I kill that 22846, then I will lose my Safari. As you can see, it is gone. So with Unix, you can, uh, which is a process here, you can send other processes. You can terminate other processes. Uh, uh, yeah, so also uh, you can, so let's create our own process here. So maybe uh, I start with my uh, uh, with so different stuff is here, but uh, so a, a very simple process would be the uh, <clears throat> printf hello stuff uh, and this process will be a C code. So if I uh, proc one, not C, uh, it will call everything. So to run this process, we need to compile it to using the GCC process, the compiler. Uh, so, but first I need to come to this desktop. I think it is where my proc lives. Okay, so GCC pro, one that C and the output will be, let's use the same name, croc1. Uh, so it gives a warning, but more importantly, it gives an error. So I think I have to include some stuff like include uh, standard io.hash, something like that. Uh, so I have a warning now. I can also prevent that warning using this tag uh, dash w. So as you can see now, I can clearly compile this code, which creates this proc one here. So to execute it, uh, I just in Unix systems, I just start with this uh, two characters, and then I just say it says hello and quits. Uh, you can also, in a Unix environment, execute a process in the background, okay? To do that, you just have to put this end sign. So in this case, uh, my program is very terrible. It just uh, doesn't even execute at all because it finishes uh, immediately. So maybe if I put a weird uh, while loop here, like the infinite uh, loop, so here. Uh, now, if I compile this new version, this terrible program, it will just 
uh, keep my system busy and without doing anything meaningful. So it will just be like, so okay, I don't have any control. I just can't type my LS, for instance. It, it just does nothing. So I need to break it manually using control C type of action. But my point is the following. So I can run this process in the background, okay, with this end sign. So uh, now the control is given back to me because the process which is doing something stupid, but it is working in the background. So if I do top now, I will be able to see my proc, okay, which has the ID of 22. Uh, 902 and it is using the CPU extensively because it is always doing something although meaningless it is doing something so again I can uh, so at this time it is I don't have any control of this I the only control is I can uh, kill this process with the ID 22902 so to go there uh, so kill 22 9 or if i say 3 it says no such process but with 2 now it is terminated and when you tap again you won't be able to see that process at all so this is some very basic uh, uh process based unix comments now let me come back to the fork business okay which is the most important part of today's class actually uh, so let me put this very that simple code uh, into my already uh, created environment. So uh, it would be doing what? So let me just put the fork which returns uh, an integer that I keep in my PID parameter. So it will return twice. It will return this uh, return to parent and to child. So how do I separate between them? If I am the, cur the current process is the child, then the PID being returned would be zero. Then I can say uh, hi from child or something. Yes, hi from child. Uh, and let me also do more here. Uh, put uh, my, my process ID is uh, is what uh, I can't just say PID because it is my parents. Uh, you use this get PID function, okay? It will can get you. Your... Can you increase the text size? Can I please what? Say increase the text size. Ah, okay, the size. Uh, okay, so let me find it. Uh, does anyone know how to do it on a sublime or I, I would... Ajam, try doing a control and mouse will up maybe it'll work control but the problem is I am not using a mouse here uh, I have a trackpad so I need I think to up, maybe control plus plus uh, I tried that but it isn't working control shift no control uh, this is my plus, right? Where is my plus? Okay. And okay. And yeah, control plus is nice. Uh, and this is minus. Okay. So I will print my ID. Uh, and by the way, please uh, follow me here with all your attention because in your programming assignments, uh, you will be implementing fork based stuff so you need to understand every step i take here uh, and so let me by the way just close this weird uh, process uh, Hocam, one one like little detail uh yeah. it says a pid zero but that's pid zero of the child is from the perspective of the parent uh so the parent will get the id of the child so currently the uh, uh, so the same so after this part uh, the program prob uh, the process is forked okay i have two different stuff as you, we discussed so one, they're running the same code 
Yes, so running the same code. So the first one uh, gets zero, not the first one, but the one that gets zero will be the child. So let me just uh, complete this and then we will uh, trace it even further. So this one will get a non-zero. So then it will be definitely the parent. Uh, and my process ID uh, is this and my process ID is this and uh, child's ID ID is uh, okay child's ID is another thing ID is like uh, it will be PID and so and then it is the end of this complicated program so let's go over this and I think I need to make some includes here but still let's try oh, okay so even without the includes so but in general you need to include this uni std.h i think since i am in a mac platform here it has handled that as well but uh, it doesn't hurt to put it here so you will be using this include as well to be able to access fork stuff so let me recompile and now when i run this with my proc one. Uh, so what happens is uh, I I have this additional column here. Yeah, I, I am doing something weird here. So let's keep things beautiful. Uh, so let's rerun this. And now what is the problem? I am making very basic stupid mistakes but okay uh, these are so when okay so in it is totally arbitrary currently scheduler decided to go with the parent okay so initially what we, what is executed is the following hi from parent so uh, okay i am the parent so my id is 22946 okay uh, sorry, 945, and my child's ID is 46, which is like one ahead of me. And then I am done. Uh, so finish, uh, but I don't even have to finish. Uh, so control goes back to uh, the child. So le let me not finish actually. So maybe I put this weird infinite loop here. Okay. So even if parent is still running uh, at some point the scheduler will give the control to the child okay so let's see that okay so here what is happening is hi from parent uh, okay hi uh, i have this id and i have this child but then i am in this while loop and at some point, so what? where does this line come from? This is totally independent. This uh, child process tells that I am this child, for instance. Uh, and so the program, uh, since I haven't executed this in the background, uh, after the child, it comes back to, uh, the, to the parent, which is just basically waiting here forever. So, uh, and... So I can, since I am still in this program, program, I can make control command or something to break it. Okay, so I, I have now killed it. So, but instead of it, let's put the sleep here, like sleep 10 seconds. I don't recall if this uh, was accepting seconds here, but still let's do the sleep version. So, okay, uh, child, after child, I came back to parent. So the parent is now doing sleep of 10 seconds and after, uh, okay, so 10 seconds has passed. So now parent has also finished, okay? So, but if I put something here, like this is uh, everyone will read here, right? Because no matter what you are, whether you are a child or not, at some point, the child, will not come here but child will come here and also the parent will come here okay uh, and also let's 
also see some values. So maybe I have this local variables a equal to two and b equal to one, just like our example. Uh, so let's also see their situation. A is equal to what uh, d and and b is equal to uh, current b, not b b. Uh, and here I put a and b. So before the execution, uh, how many times will you see this line being printed in the screen? So you, can you guess it? <clears throat> uh, yes. Uh, uh, maybe <clears throat> uh, like you are following me, right? I am talking here, but uh, I don't least... full run it. So yeah, so this will run twice uh, mm -hmm. because uh, child will hit here and parent will hit here. So let me run this real quick, clear the environment. Uh, proc one. So everyone will read here with a2 b1 basically this was printed because of the child and now the parent is sleeping and after nine seconds or ten seconds it also comes here with two and one now answer me this if i change the value of a to 222 then what do you expect uh, in this line will it uh, so what we expect is the following. So this update in the child will not affect the value of A in the parent. So when parent executes this, uh, it will print 2. And when child executes this, it will print 222. So let's first verify it real quick. See, the child prints 222 because it is the child's memory space. And once the lazy parent wakes up uh, from its sleep, it will print uh, not 222, but just two. Okay, so this is an important difference. So of something I have talked about here, okay? The updates in the child doesn't uh, affect parent and vice versa. Uh, Okay, so uh, let's go even further uh, with uh, better and more uh, interesting fork actions. So uh, le let me not do any break or something here because we are already in this fun coding environment. Okay, so no more boring lecturing stuff. Now we will go practical. So you will get more out of this session i believe that's why uh, let's continue without any break uh, and what i want to show is uh, what uh, so i was here i guess so uh, let's first visit this site where i have found some interesting examples already so uh, let's go over them and then I will even show you uh, this more interesting example. So maybe I should start with this one. So this example here is, uh, okay, so this is the course website, by the way, again. So this is, in my opinion, one of the best uh, fork examples that gives you the idea very clearly, because here I am making more than one forks, okay? Uh, in particular, I will be making three forks. So let's see the behavior uh, of the execution here. So this is important for you to understand. So what this guy does is uh, initially the pro program has this uh, <clears throat> three variables x, y, z. Uh, sorry, uh, can you make it bigger? Make it full screen. Uh, yeah, exactly. I can. I can make it bigger, uh, but I will also, instead of this guy's drawing, I will uh, do it here. So uh, how to do it here? So I 
I'm also very not good at with the uh, Mac image processing stuff. So if I get this and then if I uh, delete everything here, and will I be able to run something, put something here? Uh, so this is uh, where is the pen in this weird environment? Huh, okay. Yeah, so this is working at least. Good. So what we have here is uh, I have this variables x equal to, so this is my thread of execution. Okay, let me write this from here. So I am going here, this is my process, and I have x equal to 5 and y equal to 2 and uh, z equal to 30 for some reason. So at this point, I do a fork, okay? So here, uh, I will do a fork. So let this guy also continue here in the background. So this is, uh, maybe I need to fast forward this as well. Uh, so when it forks, be careful, the X is updated. So just to give even a better example. So this is X. So when I fork here, so let me put a little dot here. Uh, I The parent process continues execution with uh, x equal to, so parent will return, will get the ID of the child, right? So let the child get the ID of hundreds. Okay, this is arbitrary. And I write this hundred to my x location. So my two, sorry, my five, has become 100 now. And my two is also two. And I have a 30 here. So this is my parent process. Uh, but me, meanwhile, there is also this fork happened, right? So at this time, the child has obtained uh, two and uh, three, it is maintained. This is its y values, 2 and 30, sorry. And now be careful, for the x part of the child, I will put number 0. Okay, so is this clear? Uh, because the child will return number 0 from the operating system. So I am above is my child. So I get 0. Uh, and maybe I should even put it way above because... I will do a lot of things as well. So let's put it uh, uh, a little bit above is enough. Okay. So here again, x of the child is 2, uh, 0, and y is not updated, and z is not updated. So I have this situation. Now I have handled this for at the end of this line. So uh, I am having uh, two processes. One is in the bottom and the second is on the top. Now let's continue. Also let this guy continue uh, in his own notation. So he is doing something like this is the child, it gets zero for the X and the ID of the child is 100 and this ID, uh, this value, whatever it is, it is returned to the parent, and parent updates is x value. So 5 is now 100, okay? So this is the first step. Now, it says let's do another fork, okay? So, but now be careful. I have two processes running, one here, second here. So let's first do the second one, uh, the bottom one. So I am going here, uh, and so this creates a different process okay so this process uh, let the id of this child be 200 okay so that 200 i write to my y value so in my parent process this is the 200 okay and i didn't touch my x value which is 100 and i haven't touched my z value which is 30 and what happens to my child 
by the way. So this fork creates the second guy here. So the x of this guy is the x of this guy, which is 100. Uh, so let me just write it horizontally, 100. And what is the y of the child? Child gets a value of 0, and it is assigned to its y section. And what is the z of this child? It is just the z of the parent, which was above 30. Okay, so, so far, so good, hopefully. But I am not done here. Uh, so this is the fork handling this process, one, two. But be careful, I already had another process up and running. So this guy should also fork once here, and the second will be above. So for this guy, I am now using 0 to, 3, 0 to 30 triplet. So for the parent, okay, the parent will get the ID of the child. So let's use uh, the child ID of uh, 300, okay? This is the third child. So I will put the 300 as my Y value. So this two is updated. And I didn't touch my X value, which is zero. And I didn't touch my Z value, which was 30. Okay, so this is the parent process. And now, how about the child side of this fork? Uh, so x isn't updated and y equal to zero, right? Because since I am the child, I get the value of zero. So I have a zero here and uh, I am for the z part, I am just inheriting the 30 here. So I have zero, zero, 30. <clears throat> uh, Okay, so at this time, now uh, I am printing something. So what I am going to print, so I have how many processes will hit this if statement? One, two, three, four. Okay, so be careful, not two, but four. So how many type one will I print? Uh, so currently, the triplets are 0, 0, 30, 0, 330, 100, 0, 30, and, uh, <clears throat> uh, and 100, 230. Uh, so if x isn't 0, which is the case on these two, gu two guys, they will print type 1. So I will see two type 1 in the screen. And then if y isn't 0, which is the case for this process, and for this process, so I will see two type twos again. So let this guy go in his own notation. Yes, so. Uh, it is doing what I was doing on my uh, screen, but I am doing it a more brand uh, friendly way. But what it's, he says is T1, type 1 is printed twice, and now he is talking about type 2, looking at the blocks with Y not 0. So it is also printing it twice. Now let's do one more fork, okay? So things will get a little ugly but uh, so uh, l let me just start from scratch with 100 so and again since i am not an expert here uh, on, so how does this work huh, okay so i have this thread with uh, 100 0, 0, okay, 0, 0, 30. So I am rewriting and then I will delete this thing. So 0, 0, 30. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so there is space. So 0, 330 is this process, okay? So I am just copying that. 
So this one is copied above. Now I will copy this thing. I have another process coming with 0030. 0030. It is here. This is handled. And let me also copy this 100, 0, 30. So this is coming with those variable values. 100 and 0 and 30. Okay, this is done. And finally, I have this in my pocket. 100, 230. So let that be here. 100 and 200 and 30. Okay, so now let's do some cleanup. What is this? Uh, so my cleanup will be, uh, I will, uh, so, I will get rid of this part. Uh, why isn't this? Uh, yeah, so this Mac environment is really weird. Uh, so I don't know how to select them anyway, not a big problem. So I will select stuff when I maybe I am in this mode. Uh, uh, so let's just, uh, okay, I will continue from above, don't, you don't have to see below. So maybe I can make the screen bigger and get rid of the content below. Here, okay. So what we will do, from now on is the following. Uh, I will continue my execution with fork. So I have four processes in my hand and each of them will fork. So eventually I will have how many processes? I will have eight processes, right? Because each one will have two ways. So for 0030, uh, when I fork here, be careful, I will update the value of the z variable so i will always uh, attack the third variable here so this guy when i fork it let's do it at this point the i am the parent now okay the parent will get the child id uh, so let's use the child id of 400 which goes to my z section uh, as I am the parent, and zero, 00 is just maintained. Okay, so this is the parent. <clears throat> Hocam, don't yes. need to start from the bottom because it was the uh, top parent. Like, it will huh. serve first. Huh. Uh, okay, let's do it that way, but uh, notice that this is totally arbitrary because I am a scheduler now. I can give the execution to any of them, right? So, uh, but le let's stick with this guy, okay. Uh, so I am here, going here, so I forked here. Uh, and so as the parent, I will get my uh, children's ID and put it to my Z section. So my children has the ID of 400, okay. So I put it to my Z section and I maintain my Y and uh, X sections, which are 200. 100 respectively okay so this is that but i am not over for this thread because it also creates a child remember fork returns twice so here for the child fork returns zero and i put that zero to z of the child so the child doesn't have 30 but have zero now okay zero and the others are just inherited, 200 and uh, 100. Okay, so this is the two processes going on. So let me also extend this line. So they are, maybe they will later do more action. 
actually they will do some action here but let's go there later so now come back to this process okay again you can come back to any of them because scheduler will give some of these processes permission to run so let's go in order though to keep things more simple so i am here this forks so when i fork here i am the parent right so i will put the child id to my z section so i will update this 30 let the next client id be 500 okay so i am going consistently uh, so this is the parent uh, z of the parent uh, and then comes the uh, y of the parent and then comes the x of the parent which are not updated at all and again this parent is continuing its journey using these parameters okay 100 0 500 but uh, due to this fork the bl blue dot here i have generated a different process called the child of this process and as a child i will get the value of zero and i will put it to my z section so my z will be zero and i inherit zero and i inherit 100 to my x uh, again some i make weirdness okay so again this is also continuing forever not forever but for a while now let's let the scheduler give permission to this guy which forks at this blue point and i continue but how do i continue so i am this parent of this block okay so look at it locally as a parent i get the id of my child and i put it to my z section so let the id of my child be 600 so i put 600 to my z section uh, and i maintain 300 in my y section and i maintain zero in my x section and also i don't stop here i also have this child being created uh, at this blue fork and this child gets a value of zero and it assigns it to the z of it it was already zero so but anyway you just put it here zero and 300 and then comes another zero from here as inherited and finally i have this branch uh, so again here i need to move this somewhere else again some why can't i go left it is very weird but anyway so maybe i can go here so for this guy i will just move stuff here okay again sorry for the uh, image processing software here uh, and for 30 unbelievable but i am doing it one by one so okay so for the last guy what is happening is i am forking at uh, at this point so these are okay so at this point i am forking so when i fork uh, i am the parent process here right parent of this local block so i get the child id and i put it to my z section so this 330 is gone now what is the id of my child 700 so i put 700 what is happening uh, 700 here in my um, z section so let's write it uh, what is this okay so uh, let's write it vertically 700 in my z uh, and y is still zero and x is still zero okay so this is the uh, that process and finally this fork here has create has returned twice once with 700 and once with zero okay so that zero is in my z section and that zero is my inherited y section and that zero is my inherited x section and now i am over okay so at this point i have how many processes i have one two three four five six seven eight so now with that in mind let's come and answer these questions 
uh, so this guy is going to do this stuff in his own way. So I am skipping here. Now let's do the printing. Okay. So here, if x is bigger than zero, y is bigger than zero, and z is bigger than zero. By the way, process IDs are always zero. So here I am testing whether they are zero or not. Basically, uh, it can't be negative. If fork fails, then it returns no, uh, a negative value, but this doesn't happen a, a lot, right? It it shouldn't fail. If your system is overdosed, like there is no memory for a new process, then it will fail. But it is uh, going to happen very uh, rarely. Anyway, so how many times type 3 will print? So what will this guy write here? Can you look at this picture and tell me? So for the processes with uh, at least one non-zero value, so uh, again, I have all zeros here. So this process will not print, but all others, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of them will print it. So hopefully it will write seven here. Yes, seven, this is the seven. How many will print T4? So I am looking for x, y being 0 and z being non-zero. Okay, so x, y, 0, but not this. Okay, this is the case. x and y is 0, z is 700. This will print and, uh, and, to, and what? And no one else, right? Uh, so this will print once. Yeah, so this is supposed to be a one, I think. It says written T, but it is one. Then comes T5. What is happening here? Uh, I will print. Uh, if X is not zero, Y is not zero, Z is not, not zero. So basically, it is the uh, case with this 100, 200, 400. Okay, 100, 200, 400. This is 100, 200, 0. So this will print. So this will print also only once. And if we wait for it, it just says that it just gives that print and it finishes, etc. Et uh, so uh, this was quite a nice example, in my opinion. Uh, and you should go over that. Uh, the link to that is on my slides anyway. Uh, so you should understand this behavior, okay? A fork is returning twice with different values. And uh, I will just now look at some basic, relatively simpler examples in this geek uh, address, okay? Uh, so fork in C, so this will mostly repeat what I have said, but still... Let's go over that. Uh, operating system, blah, blah, uh, creates two process. Okay, so let's go over the examples. So predict the output of the following. So this is not even a problem for you at this point, hopefully, but still. Uh, I have created two processes. They are running the same program, but they returned zero and non-zero, but I don't even keep those values. So it will just print to hello. Now, what about the number of times hello is printed here? Okay, so I have three forks, just like the example I have played with here. But I, I just uh, want to understand the behavior. So do you agree that if I have n calls, then you will have 2 to the power of n, uh, 2 to the power of n, uh, processes at hand with n forks okay so this is clear hopefully because every process creates two new process uh, so maybe i can this is obviously clear but just for the sake of it so i am one process here i forked i have two process now then the second fork will replace this with two others actually not replace because one is the same as the above but anyway another fork for the four and now let's do the third fork 
it will fork for this guy creating two guys fork for this guy creating two guys and fork for this guy creating two guys and fork for this guy creating other two guys so you get the idea here hopefully it is 2 to the power of n where n is the number of calls and what else do they have an interesting example no this is the very first example we dealt with uh, uh, okay predict the output of the huh, okay this may be interesting so i am uh, hiding the output uh, so x is one okay this is the local variable the child increases it and parent decreases it so uh, and then prints it so uh, wh what does the child print okay it will print two right and uh, then the turn comes to parent for instance and it will print zero because it doesn't know the two here it just knows its own copy which was one so it makes one zero okay so i have two and zeros but the order is totally arbitrary so in my example uh, i first handled child then parent but this can also happen first parent makes it zero and then child doesn't increase zero to one but it increases one to two okay be careful about this uh, and more questions like n times fork it will give this uh, but you need to be careful child processes so it will create two to the n process but the childs are two to the n minus one because the first one was the beginner the parent of everything uh, so what is this doing i have this code fragment uh, when I fork it, so I just don't use an additional variable here. Okay, it, it doesn't use it at all. Does it use it here somewhere? Okay, so okay, this website doesn't like to use additional variables. Okay, so if we come here, uh, the child so this is the child right because it gets the zero uh, it increases a by five and this parent decreases a by five so if you call u the print of this value and v uh, v is the print of this value forget about v for a second so you what is the relationship between u and uh, x what is x by the way x huh, okay u is the print of this value sorry the parent process so this will be u and this will be x so the they over complicate this problem but uh, what this stupid code does is actually uh, this increases a by five initial value and this decreases the initial value by five so there will be a difference of 10 between this print and this print so it will be but everything is 10 here so anyway so you you can solve this right so uh, this one should be bigger so this one u is the parent okay so u will be the small one and x will be the big one so uh, x is going to be the big big one then i think this will be the answer and there is also one last thing and uh Hocam, yes for, for the last question we um i mean v and y will not be cool right because they will be the copy of the, each other yes exactly uh -huh. okay. we, yeah i didn't even read that part but i think we were they are holding these parts uh, and yeah these are different memory copies so they are going to be different uh, and so this is what is this doing i don't really like this code but uh, these are just forking so if you fork here 
end it. So if you return zero, then this becomes zero, but this still executes. So I, I anyway, so this is uh, defeating the purpose here. But I have seen fork bomb here. So maybe you will be uh, amazed by this thing. So this is your first virus program, virus program, if you want to hurt someone. What fork bomb does is, actually this is the program that will kill any system it is run on. So a fork bomb is a program which harms a system by making it run out of memory. Because remember, each fork, creates two new process. Every process comes with a memory, right? So even if it is a dump process, it has this process control block, PCB, which takes some kilobytes of memory, right? Uh, so, and this grows exponentially, as we have shown here, two to the N, okay, exponential growth. Uh, so this will become enormous, like uh, in 10 or 20 iterations, but, you are even going wild, you will run it millions of times like uh, forever. It won't run forever because at some point your memory will be will uh, be fully full. So it will be non-responsive and everything on your system will freeze and you will have to reset your computer. Uh, so it doesn't look like a big deal, but if you are running a server, this is called the denial of service attack, DOS. Maybe you have heard of it. Uh, so once you run this thing in a Unix system, you can't run it in a Windows because Windows doesn't know fork, uh, but you can do create process system call for the Windows bomb. But anyway, uh, uh, so it will make your server uh, non-responsive, okay? So don't run this program on your computer. Uh, unless you are prepared to reset it, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so these are dead facts. <clears throat> mm, process fork. So I have talked enough and forked enough, I think, today. Uh, and I don't want you to, mm, I don't want to overwhelm you. Uh, so this, this is a very mild, uh, and basic introduction to the fork business. I hope that this example and the others are clear. You should uh, follow them, understand them, and I, I won't proceed today further. So we will handle the rest next week, where we will make the processes talk with each other, okay? Uh, but they will be done later. Currently, what you need to do is, uh, I have told you to, uh, uh, to install Ubuntu, right? Uh, either use a virtual machine like virtual box or VMware player, uh, or you can, if you have a Mac like I do, you can just uh, run your programs compiled because GCC, GCC also already compiles fork business for you. Uh, or you can still be in your Windows and install a uh, Unix terminal software. So there are many ways, uh, but I have to ensure that you do some of them at least. So that's why I want you to uh, do this. So this won't be graded, but it will be like uh, considered as an attendance. Get a screenshot of your uh, output in your system on your laptop where you do the following. Uh, just uh, print the so where am I writing this? So let me write this here. Your task is like this. So I will put this uh, somewhere else as well, like post it, email it. But uh, the very basic idea can be get number n from the user and then uh, let the parent process uh, print one to uh, n over 2, and let the child process print the remaining. Uh, what is the remaining? n over 2 plus 1 to n. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> just do this. Uh, you will observe 
weird behaviors maybe don't panic don't worry uh, i just want you to uh, see what is going to happen okay uh, tell the parent to pr print stuff from one to n over two and tell the child to print stuff from n over two plus one to n okay and uh, just uh, do this like uh, and uh, send that to eugene rta uh, and uh, from there uh, we will get i will put the, your contribution to your attendance part okay uh, so it is not a regular programming assignment uh, it is just uh, it will force you to install your fork stuff the ubuntu etc uh, yeah, you're gonna email to email this test to us right Yes, yes, uh -huh. I will email the test, but okay. I, I just made it up currently, so I will just uh, copy-paste this to email, and uh, since you hopefully follow what I am saying here, you will be able to complete it. Uh, and, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so, again, I don't care what environment you use, VirtualBox or Ubuntu directly or Windows-based or Mac, whatever, just make this done okay uh, 